coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. It's a me, a movie trailer. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with ya. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I'm joined as I'm always joined by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. We've got a good show for you today. We're going to be talking about the news from the week, including, of course, the Super Mario Brothers movie trailer. And then on Thursday, it's part two of the ABCs of the Nintendo 64. But Mark, in the meantime, how's it going? It's going great. You know, Patrick, I realized something as I was uh, driving over to record this episode that... A week and a half ago, we brought up again the um, young James Bond novels. <laughs> yes, and we were taking... we brought them up again. We brought them up a separate time. We from did when bring we were them talking... a separate okay, time right, because I, I was talking about uh, oh that the... you were going to get into murder. She wrote <laughs> yes. books. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yes. Okay. So at in that episode, uh, I, we said, "How old do you think the young James Bond is?" Yes. And we each took a guess. I said eighteen. You said. I younger think I, than that. I, I like, think I said like 15 or 16. Yeah, yeah. And so, and we said we were going to look it up and announce the answer on Tuesday's mm. episode, which we never we did. We never did that. So we're doing that now. Have you done that? Because I did now. look it okay, up. Okay, great, great, yeah, great. I looked it up and James Bond. Watch him be like nine. <laughs> he was thir- in the first novel. He is 13 years old. That's pretty young. It's cr- He feels crazy to me. Yeah. He be- feels crazy. <laughs> He feels out of control to me. This is a 13-year-old I can't yeah. deal with. But he's already sent off to a private school. What am I going to do? It feels crazy to me because having not read the novel, so maybe right. they pull it off. Maybe they're good. I feel like the appeal of James Bond is that he like drives fast cars, mm-hmm. drinks, you know, right. and sleeps at, around. At 13... What is he doing? It feels like like a he's just got like a like a Nancy like, Drew type thing going. He's got on. like a Has bike with pegs. Right? <laughs> like what's going what's going yeah. on? So I'm not going to read these. Okay, but, but um maybe or maybe actually what it is is you know Indiana Jones was mm-hmm. kind of created out of um well, this isn't even that's actually not even true. I was gonna say kind of created out of wanting to do their own James Bond, but that's not like really true. Yeah, but wanting to do like their own serial adventure. Uh-huh. Like there there there's an element of that. Right. And then James Bond had it or sorry, Indiana Jones had its spin-off, the young Indiana Jones Chronicle. Right. So maybe this edutainment is James Bond kind of like taking inspiration from Indiana Jones. Yes. And they're like, all right, we're gonna do the young Indiana Jones Chronicle, but with James Bond. Here's when we were talking, when I when I mentioned like a nine year old James Bond, that made me think that what we really need, Mark, and I think you'll agree with me on this, is James Bond babies. I would watch it. I <laughs> I would watch it. I, I want to see watch it. a little baby Blofeld. Come on, <laughs> it'd be so good. That'd be very good. <laughs> um, a little baby like uh uh Q putting together like things with Legos. Uh huh. That'd be good. That would be. I think excellent. we I think we need baby James Bond. Um, Mark, has this turned into a James Bond podcast? What's happened <laughs> no, to us? No, I refuse. Uh, me too. Um, here's another thing you can refuse. My copy of Sonic Forces for the Nintendo Switch. Would you like to borrow it? You can. All you got to do is email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. And give us a mailing address so we can send you my copy of Sonic Forces for the Nintendo Switch. You play it for as long as you want. You send it back. I pay for postage both ways. It really is my copy of Sonic Forces. It's the one I bought to play. Uh, back when I wanted to play it. Actually, that copy got lost. I bought a second one to replace it, but it's still mine, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. It is still yours. It is still mine, uh, and it will always be mine. Um, There may be a copy of Untitled Goose Game in the box when you get it instead of Sonic Forces. Uh, That is also mine, (laughs) but you can play it for as long as you want. It's the perfect borrowing program. Another thing you can do is you can friend us on Switch. Our friend codes are in the description of every episode we would love to become friends with you on the system so that way you can see what we're playing we can see what you're playing and we can play games together yeah it's uh, i mean that that is that's the ideal right is that we can all play games together here's another thing that helps with playing games together get in our discord we've got a nintendo cartridge society discord where people are having great conversations about nintendo stuff all the time um it's a fun friendly welcoming place if you would like to be part of that community just send us an email hit us up on twitter let us know and we will send you an invite that's short for invitation um all right mark are you ready to get into what we've been playing this week yeah let's do it (laughs) 
So I don't know that either of us have uh, anything new to report this week. We've both been playing games that we've been playing uh, in, in in weeks past. Uh, Mark, Mark, I went up to the I went out to the desert, out to Joshua Tree this this weekend. Had a wonderful time. Didn't touch a video game all weekend long. Um, but tell me about what you've been playing. So I've been playing. Uh, you're absolutely right. Not really anything new to report. Splatoon three. On Sunday, I intended to just like play a little bit of salmon run just a few minutes yeah. a couple of rounds in between you know doing chores and other stuff like that and it turned into like a two hour yes. salmon run fest i'm a i'm professional uh level one Very right good. now mm-hmm. which i am finding and you know talking in the discord i know this is not true for everybody but i'm finding that at this point like playing with randoms online is difficult to progress because without like a certain amount of communication um and i'm not even that high level but uh without a certain amount of communication it just becomes like really difficult yeah yeah yeah. uh and so i I said this before a couple of weeks ago but the timing just hasn't worked out but i'm really eager to play with uh friends and you know people online so if you are in the discord i'm hoping to get something started really soon um that's very exciting are you enjoying playing salmon run i am i again have said this before but i'm so happy that salmon run is available all the time yeah uh because it's really like all i play right now i haven't got into turf war very much at all i think like i'm still level seven maybe in turf wars i basically just did it uh until you unlock salmon kind run. of yeah. yeah and then a little bit you know during Splatfest and stuff but overall it's like when i turn the game on i i haven't even started the single player yet which i really want to get Mark, into you gotta check it out i know because you, it's very and, interesting yes i know i just anytime i turn it on i'm like well maybe just one or two rounds of salmon run and then you'll that just turns into you'll yeah. never get to it i know that's i know <laughs> um uh, that's very exciting. I would also like to get back to uh, to Splatoon 3, uh, especially with just the amount of chatter that we see. Again, just a shout out to the Discord. Um, it's a very active uh, Splatoon 3 channel that we've got there. Um, people really clued into like the differences between like how the weapons work and nerfings and all that kind of stuff. I love it because it's like watching someone who's really good at math you know, like solve a complex problem. Sure, they, that's they they can put down their like uh their like floor buffing machine and like solve the big equation ex- on the board. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I feel like that's what I'm watching in this uh in the Splatoon three Discord channel because um like it's a level that I have not even like high level discussion. Yeah, yeah, that's it's right. It's amazing. Um, Mark, I look. I feel like maybe I'm the only one on the planet, but I'm still playing the heck out of uh, Shovel Knight Dig. Um, it's just so fun and I love the, uh, it, I was just about to say exploration, but there's not really exploration. It just, every time you go in, you know, it's a randomly, uh, generated or procedurally generated, uh, series of encounters, Shovel Knight style. But every time I do it, I feel like I'm embarking on some like fun, epic quest, uh, that I'm really, really digging. Uh, there are more, uh, sort of events that are happening in the hub world now, like earthquakes are triggered. Um, there's a, a tower off in the distance, which I believe to be, um, um, Specter Knight's castle, but I've, I've not had that confirmed to me yet. That collapsed uh, in the distance. I don't know what effect that has had on like my gameplay. I found my first set of like blueprints for new armor um, that makes me more magical and less like physical. Um, and the designs in the game are just like uh, so cute and fun, and like there's so much character expressed throughout the game. Mark, you saw me play a little bit of it when you arrived um, tonight to record. Um, was 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 I was my previous description of it accurate? Have, yeah, have I, I been describing the game right? Yeah, d- I th- think so. But I think you know, just based on the kind of game it is and all that kind of stuff, like I wasn't sure that I would really like it. Like I wasn't really interested. But watching yeah. you play it, yeah. it made me interested in picking it up because not only oh. did the gameplay look fun, but the world itself looks really fun. Like the character designs are really fun and like funny yes and then the gameplay looks really satisfying but the game itself also just like looks really beautiful i said it i was telling you it looks like a just like really like blown out amazing game boy advance game yeah totally it's got a lot of the same sort of like color choices like for whatever reason there's like a purple that like when you see it on the screen you're like that's that's game boy advance purple yeah it's very it's very appealing so yeah i you know went from not really having any interest in it but now i'm like oh maybe i should check this out 
I and you know like uh, honestly for for me I I love Shovel Knight. I love the way he moves. I love the way he attacks. Just like uh an excuse to or like a reason to continue controlling him and like run around and stabbing dudes with the shovel like it's it's perfect. It's like having infinite Mario, which I suppose Mario Maker was, but this is so much uh more satisfying than that. Um all right, Mark, that's what we've been playing this week. Let's get into the new releases and what we might be playing next week. Tomorrow, October 12th, Lego Brick Tales is released on the Switch eShop. And this is a game that we flagged during, I think, the the partner uh, mini direct um, a, a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago at this point, back in June. June? June. Um, that, uh, what, 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 it, it looked, can you tell what, what type of game this is? So, I, from the trailer, from that little glimpse that we got, it looked kind of like an isometric... Uh, almost like Captain Toad type thing where you are building Lego sets yeah. in a way that just made it look like more like a Lego set building game. But you're also like a little Lego dude in it, yeah, right? Yeah, so according to the description, it's like your uncle, the story mode is that like- My your, uncle? Uh, your uncle. <laughs> your uncle <laughs> shows up. I'm, no, Patrick's I uncle shows it. up. Your character in the game, your uncle shows up and like needs help with his amusement park. So you, <laughs> so in order to like get parts or something like that, you have to help other people in the world. And the way you help them is by solving puzzles. And the way you solve puzzles is with like Lego bricks. Yeah. And um, then there's also like a free build mode. So I think both like our initial impression of it is true, but just seems to be like a game mode. Yeah. So I know that it for sure is releasing on Steam on the 12th. But the interesting thing is that on the the list that we have of new releases, it is on there for the Switch as well. But if you go to the Nintendo website listing for the game, it just says 2022. Mm. So I don't know 100% if it is releasing uh, tomorrow, but allegedly it is. Uh, I like an alleged game release. And then uh, it's a real throwback to the early days of this show. Yeah, when we had no idea how to confirm any of these things. And, uh, you know, of course we still don't. <laughs> Why would we? What's changed? <laughs> on, We're the same basic guys. On Thursday, October 13th, uh, Bus Simulator City Ride is released for Switch. And the reason I'm calling this out is because it is another entry in a like genre of game that I find really interesting, which is, you know, like a a really realistic simulator for something just very specific. You know, there's like tractor simulator, right. there's power wash simulator, there's this bus simulator city ride, which is again like a game where there are, I think they, the description was like 10, but 10 licensed, so like real buses that exist in the world yeah. that you like dr can drive around a city and, and, you know, drop passengers off and all that stuff. But in addition to that, you are able to, um, uh, create your own transit system. So you oh. plan, you know, like what buses you're going to purchase, what they're, where the stops are going to be, all that kind of stuff. It's based on, it's a fictional like city that is based on an amalgam of uh, cities in Northern Europe. Uh, yeah, I just find these like really fascinating because we all have something in our lives with, that we really, you know, like care about and we know all the details of. Right, and that we just fixate on. Yeah, yeah, and but that like, you know, isn't really appealing to anybody else. And I love when there are these simulator games like for that, uh, those specific niches. Uh, what would your simulator game be? Oh, man. I mean, I think it really is like a, uh, you know. It exists, and I think it's Roller Coaster Tycoon. Oh, yeah. That, I mean, that, that's yeah. a great point. Uh, I will note, I'm not saying this is mine, uh, but there's no podcast simulator yet. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Podcast production simulator. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Maybe it should. <laughs> so good. Um, man, it would be annoying, though. Also on Thursday, Pilot Wing 64 is com coming to Nintendo Woo! Switch Online, Nintendo 64. Um, I'm excited about this. Uh, uh, as the the story I tell about getting my Nintendo 64 on the the day it was released, um, I thought f there there was a moment where I thought I was going home with Pilot Wing 64 and not Mario 64 until I told you know me a precocious 12 year old or whatever telling the also probably a kid behind the counter to open that other box that probably had Mario 64 in it. But so I've never actually played Pilot Wings 64. Um. And, and I, I'm not a particularly a fan of the original Pilot Wings, but 64 has so much so much more to it. Uh, and it looks like Nestor is in the game. 
Have you seen this? No. So, like, I don't know if they call him Nestor, but there is a character in the game that looks 100% like the the old Howard and Nestor, Nestor character. Who of of course, Nestor's Funky Bowling. Of Nestor's Funky Bowling, of course. And, Mark, if you think that's the only mention of uh, Nestor's Funky Bowling in this episode, you are dead wrong. <laughs> we will get back to it. Um, but, you know, just a, a series of, like, you know, uh, parachuting and hang gliding and, uh, you know, weird plane flying challenges. Um, I could get into that. Yeah, I have not played a lot of Pilot Wing 64 at all, but I have listened to the soundtrack a lot. It's Ooh. another one like Wave Wave Ray 64 where yeah. the soundtrack is just so good. Uh it is also it's maybe running at a better frame rate than it did in its original release. Yeah, so Game Explain uh ran a comparison video between like uh gameplay from the original game on Nintendo 64 and the gameplay that's in the trailer that Nintendo put out last week. And it does appear that um, the new footage is running at closer to 60 frames per second, whereas uh, the original was running at about 30, uh, and that 60 frames per second was reserved for menus. Um, uh, it is unclear what is happening there. Like, if we're actually seeing, like, honest to goodness um, gameplay uh, video from that, or if it's, like, a different emulator that's not, like, clocking the, the anticipated frame rate that it would be on Switch, or what is happening. But it's not, Nintendo has not officially announced, like, with frame rate improvements, uh, and also they haven't done that for anything else. Um, also, Pilot Wing 64 is not among the games that is uh, improved by the expansion pack, so it's not even as though that is a, because we talked about that last week, the expansion pack, improving the... Uh, um, the uh, performance of, of various Nintendo 64 games. So it's unclear what's happening here. Nintendo's not advertising it. We'll all ha get our hands on it in a couple days. Um, I did see some like weird speculation about um, uh, timers and like the way games count seconds and tying those to frames uh, and changing the, f like the locked frame rate on pilot wings may mess up the oh weird uh, like the clock the internal clock of the yeah. game um but all of that is speculation no one really knows until we have our hands on it uh, and i'm very interested to see uh if this is a smoother version of that game or if uh we just saw something weird in the uh, pre-release footage and then on friday october 14th nickelodeon kart racers 3 slime speedway is released sort of just can't believe that they've released three of these things yeah I don't remember them releasing the other two. I mean, I remember them releasing the first because oh, okay. we, we talked about it a little bit on the show where I was like, do I want to get this so I can play as Donatello? Right? Like that was oh, that's a right. thought that crossed my mind. That's Maybe right. Maybe Michelangelo, who knows? One of the turtles for sure. Um, but it's a, it, like, you know, we've had one Mario Kart game in the, <laughs> in the time they put out a bunch of uh, Nickelodeon kart racers. Uh, and obviously Mario Kart is a superior game, but it's just, uh, I don't know, all of the, every time they like trot out the Nickelodeon characters and they're like, look, we can treat these just like the Nintendo characters as they did with the uh, uh, Nickelodeon All-Star All -Star Brawl um, being a Smash-like game. And then these being, you know, kart racers. Um, I, I wonder how successful that is for them. This is the third one of these. So like, it must be at least kind of successful, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. And then also on Friday, and I think this is where you were leading with uh, Nestor earlier, Super Funky Bowling is released on the Switch eShop. Yeah, I'm sad to report this has nothing to do with the Virtual Boy Classic Nestor's Funky Bowling. Um, it's just like a $3 sort of crappy looking bowling game <laughs> on Switch. But, you know, look, I, I'm, I'm not going to pass up an opportunity to bring up Nestor's Funky Bowling or the Virtual Boy, uh, and this allows us to do both. Um, Mark, anything in this, uh, in this week that you're interested in, in uh, picking up? I mean, other than Pilot Wings, of course. Yeah, not really anything. I feel like uh, we're just a couple of weeks out from the Mario Plus Rabbids game. And I'm thinking that'll probably be the next big one that I pick up. Mario Plus Rabbids and uh, Bayonetta, like both. Yeah, drop right around the same both, time. Both drop right at basically the exact same time. Uh, all right, Mark. Um, th those are the new releases. Let's close this segment out. Which brings us to a regular segment on our show. It is time for 433. In 1952, American composer John Cage wrote a piece called 433, wherein a performer or group of performers didn't play their instruments for 4 minutes and 33 seconds. For the purposes of this show, our instruments are talking about Nintendo. So, for the duration of one performance of 433, Mark and I will talk about something not at all Nintendo-related, thus fulfilling the contract 
of the piece. Uh, Mark, I'm administering a quiz to you today. That's right. We're continuing our month of quizzes. Right. And they're all spooky quizzes, right? So uh, we are going to uh, plan the ultimate Halloween party to reveal which spooky movie you should be watching uh, during it. Plan the ultimate Halloween party to reveal which spooky movie you should watch during it. So we're going to plan all the things, all the activities and decorations, I'm guessing, and stuff around the party. Right. And what we choose there will determine what movie we should watch during the party. Okay, I, I now I now follow the concept. Um, we will use our party planning to determine what the movie is. Yeah, that's right. That's the reverse of <laughs> any way you would ever do a movie watching party. Um, okay, first, where are you hosting this party? Uh, a spooky barn, a haunted house, somewhere in the woods, a corn maze, or in an abandoned <laughs> hospital? Well, uh, I think of those the most likely I'm... Uh, for me, would be a corn maze. Corn maze. Mark's, yeah. Mark's going for the corn maze. Great. Uh, <laughs> who's invited? Your options are anyone, my family, <laughs> my friends, just my BFF, friends and family. <laughs> do you know what? I'm going to do uh, a... You can't, uh, say, you can't say anyone. I'm gonna do, okay. I'm going to do a friends party. Just friends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My friends. Perfect. Uh, choose some decorations. And now I just have to describe these to you. Um, so there's like a, it's like Christmas lights and skeletons. Um, and like a lot of skeletons and a lot of Christmas lights. Um, then there's like uh, pumpkins and candles. Okay. But, but not jack-o'-lanterns. It's not like together, uh-huh. right? Um, there's kind of like a cute, like, uh, you know, ghost and like it says boo and like their letters that you would put out. Right. Okay. Um, uh, fake tombstones, uh, and just like a bunch of pumpkins. Okay, I think in a corn maze, not the bunch of pumpkins. What was the pumpkin one before There's that? Pumpkins and candles. Yeah, we'll do that one. Okay, you're gonna someone's gonna burn alive in this <laughs> uh, corn maze. Choose some drinks to serve. Um, so there's these are all pictures. And so, but here we go. Uh, there's like a, a a red sort of like cocktail thing with like fruit and like sprigs of things in it. Uh, what appears to just be ice water. Um, some gin and tonics. Um, some like fruit juice, uh, tropical fruit juices, and then like uh, uh, lattes with um, latte art with like foam art. Oh, let's do the lattes. That lattes with nice. foam art. Okay, great. Um, can't forget about the food. More cookies here, or more uh, pictures here. Um, so there's uh, cookies that are like frosted cookies, like those uh-huh. grocery store uh, ones, pumpkins and, and ghosts. Um, there are like sandwich cookies with like chocolate cream on the inside. Okay. There's uh, like a, an orange swirl kind of cookie. Um, there are little ghost cupcakes and a pumpkin cupcake, and then uh, what appears to be like a pumpkin cheesecake. I think the cupcakes. Okay, is what go, we'll do. going with the cupcakes. Choose some entertainment. Okay, a pianist, a band, a random creepy clown scaring people, karaoke, or a costume contest. A costume contest. Gotta go. If we're gonna costume. watch a movie, I don't need a piano player. No, of course not. Unless it's a silent movie, and then that's a baller move. Uh, finally, what kind of costume are you wearing? Your choices are a movie hero, something cute, something creepy, a movie villain, or I'm just using face paint. I'm going to be a movie villain. Okay, I want you to know that the, uh, the, a movie villain is a woman dressed as Beetlejuice. Huh. So, I mean, I, I guess he is, but it's weird for me to think of... Uh, Beetlejuice as the villain of that movie. Yeah. Um, of all movie villains you could pull. Why Beetlejuice? Uh, so, Mark, we're watching Scream huh. at your party. This is such a phenomenal satire of the entire genre of horror, mocking the classic cliches we all know and love. Among the best elements of Scream is that it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's a dark comedy rife with humor and fantastic irony, garnering just as many laughs as it does screams. Look at that. Perfectly, Perfect timing. perfectly timed out. Uh, uh, I'll go to that party. I don't, have to, I don't want to have to wear a costume, though. I'll just sit out the costume contest. Okay, that's fair. Um, we, you, your job will be to make sure that the candles don't burn down any of the corn stalks. And I'm not going to be successful in that. <laughs> I'm going to fail in that task. Uh, we were accompanied today by pianist Kyle Shaw. All right, Mark. Let's get into the news. <laughs> That was that was that was some Splatoon music. Let's get into the news. It's a long one. 
Well, it happened. The Super Mario Brothers movie trailer dropped last Thursday, as promised. And um, here we are, 25 into the, minutes into the episode, just talking about it now. Just yeah. starting to talk about it now, Mark. Yep. So uh, let's talk about the direct real quick. Yes. So Miyamoto, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto, creator of Mario, comes on video and is like, hey, really excited to show this to you. He tosses it to Chris Melodandri, who also says, hey, I'm really excited to show this to you. It's it's classic uh, say nothing speech um, from two titans of industry uh, that can't tell you anything about what they're working on other than they are excited to show it to you. Uh huh. And thanking each other for working together. Yes. Yes. And then so and then uh, one Chris throws to another Chris mm-hmm. and um, no, Andre to to Pratt. Uh huh. And Chris Pratt uh, has like a little r- recorded message talking about how much he enjoyed playing the original Super Mario Brothers game or the original mario brothers game that's in right in arcades and then he throws to i saw him getting a little heat from people uh because he said that he liked to stomp koopas in uh the original mario brothers game but a- anyone who's played that game knows that you have to attack them from the bottom yeah i think it's okay <laughs> uh, and then uh J- chris pratt throws to jack black who uh, is very charming yeah and talking about you know playing uh bowser and then like at- Gene Simmons from Kiss. <laughs> and then after that, the trailer rolls. Trailer rolls. And um, you know, leading up to this, I was very worried about yes. what was going to happen. And the trailer starts with um this kind of like menacing reveal of uh Bowser and his troops and like the airship coming in all this mm-hmm. kind of stuff and like kind of violently dropping anchors into like the ice and it's like lava e and yes and it's really building to like the music and everything is really building to this moment this reveal of Bowser and I was dreading yeah that the like, undercut the undercut where it's like Bowser's going to like he's going to fart he's going to yeah or or he's going to be like oh for a little you know like Something Some dumb was going to happen. To like yes. undercut the tension or, you know, Bowser's about to talk and like a, a underling, you know, says something stupid. But when, that does not happen. Does not happen. And when that moment passed where like it didn't happen, I was just like, oh, this is going to be fine. Yeah. Like it, it may not end up being amazing, but it's going to be fine. Right. Well, and then it is, it is actually followed by like a jokey thing that happens where the, so... Bowser is attacking a, a castle that is full of uh, penguins, right? Uh, penguins very much in the new Super Mario Brothers style, uh, like when Mario is wearing the penguin suit. Um, and they're all adorable, right? Um, but the penguin army attacks as best they can by throwing snowballs, uh, which do knock down a couple of uh, Bowser's uh, troops, but obviously have zero effect on this giant lizard man creature, whatever Bowser is, King of the Koopas. Um and that's the joke that their their effort to uh, defend themselves is wholly inadequate. Um, but it doesn't play like a goofy joke. It just sort of like plays like a regular joke. Well, because it's like they, it's not. And this is so weird to be talking about like Bowser is this like serious character, but it's like it's not at the expense of Bowser's right menace, right. Right, like it is the joke is that the penguins are like ineffectual. Right, it's not that Bowser is and not they're, dangerous. they're like ho- hoity-toity. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's not that Bowser is not dangerous, which I think is like I don't know. It it I felt so much like I didn't love the trailer. I wasn't like I'm super excited for this right. movie, but I thought it was pretty good. I felt like it was the best I could have hoped for. In yeah, all honesty. I mean, in a lot of ways, I've been dreading this thing, right? Um, and I still sort of dread the movie coming out um but also like i don't know i i I feel like the the part of the fear was that like uh it was gonna be so bad there was gonna be a uh they fly now moment in the trailer that like everyone could just like pile on and and like i guess to some extent that like freeze frame of like mario kind of like clutching his chest it's definitely become a meme like it's, it's it's become a meme but like i don't think in a way where people are making fun of it right um and it's weird to feel like an attachment to a thing that I suspect will probably be bad, um, or at least not for me, right? Um, but just uh, seeing this trailer, I a, a lot of my worries about it have been kind of put at ease. Yeah, I feel exactly the same way. I was really dreading it. But it's like, 
Yeah, I think there's a chance it could be good. Could be good. Like could I think good. like after watching this, I am just like, oh, I don't have to think about this ever again. Yeah, that's right. Until we have to go see it. Right. Which we absolutely will. Um it's a uh, so that that sort of scene with uh, Bowser, he uh, you know, uh, destroys the castle, gets his hands on, on a power star and is like, "Who's going to stop me?" Uh, and again, it's Jack Black, so it's uh, so charismatic and so powerful and good. Jack Black, a treasure. Let's never, let's never let him down. Well, I don't, I don't know what that means, <laughs> but let's never let him down. Um, and then we kind of like cut over to Mario mm-hmm. tumbling into the uh, the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah, shooting out of a pipe, mm-hmm. tumbling into the Mushroom Kingdom, seemingly new to the Mushroom Kingdom. Right, doesn't know where he is or what's going on. Is greeted by Toad, the Olaf of the Super Mario Brothers movie, which I think that's right. <laughs> tracks. I mean, per, I mean, maybe Olaf is the Toad of the Frozen universe. Yeah, I mean, it does sort of feel like he, he's being like retro, because like the way the way that Olaf is made of snow and he lives in the snowland, like Toad is made of mushrooms and he is in the mushroom land. Like, I think I think the one for one, I think that's perfect. Um, uh, gotta say. Uh, the voice that Keegan Michael Key is using here um, uh, disappears into the character. Like I couldn't, I wouldn't have been able to pick it out. No, perfect. And like, uh, you know, not not like gro- grading in the way that right, Toads right. sound in the games, but still like enough. We were like, yeah, th- that totally makes sense as a Toad talking, right? Which you know, I, th- I mean, this is obvious, right? Like Keegan Michael Key is a, a a skilled sketch performer and like a great actor. Like of of course he's doing something uh, very good and interesting, and that he disappears into the role. Um, but we also get our our first uh, listen, uh, our first sounds out of Mario's mouth, the the, the Chris Pratt Mario voice, uh, and he doesn't say much. Uh, he says maybe a total of like seven words in in the whole trailer. Uh, uh, Mark, what did you think of the uh, Mario voice? And not to dwell on the seven words that come out of Mario's mouth, but what did you think of the, to the me, Mario voice? It, and I've I've only watched the trailer once. Like when during the direct, but uh, to me, it genuinely just sounded like Chris Pratt. So, I, I've I've seen two comments about uh, the, the voice. One uh, that it's just Chris Pratt doing Chris Pratt's voice, um, and uh, it sounds like Linda Belcher from Bob's Burgers. <laughs> and let me tell you, those two things cannot both be true. <laughs> so, and I know I know it's it's futile to say okay, which is it internet because it's a, a different people saying it, but I think it I think neither is true, right? That like I think Chris Pratt is doing a voice, it maybe hues a little bit closer to what we expect um from Chris Pratt, but kind of like earlier Pratt, like almost uh, Andy Dwyer Parks and Recreation era um Chris Pratt. Like he doesn't sound like uh, Owen Grady or Star Lord. Right? I'm like, I'm really impressed you pulled. Thank the, you. Uh, character name. Did from you Jurassic see my World? eyes cross <laughs> and roll back in my head as, as I said the name <laughs> Owen Grady? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I think the voice is pretty good. Like, uh, there's. Have, have you seen um, uh, like fan edits that like put? Yeah, the Charles Marnay stuff in. Yeah, I think that kind of sucks. I yeah, I, I don't know that it really like improves anything well and also like seven words you can deal with that you can deal with seven words fine wait till this dude has to talk for 45 minutes yeah um yeah yeah i don't i don't know the the chris pratt voice was probably like again in like the seven words we saw or heard the um uh the part that i was least like sold on yeah but that's fine yeah yeah, I mean, I think that's ultimately what it boils down to. Look, we've talked we talked now about this trailer. I don't know for ten minutes almost, um, and there's not there's not much here, right? Like I, I was very happy to see, not that I was expecting it, but when there was just a brief glimpse in the trailer, because like we didn't see Princess Peach, we didn't see a lot of there's a lot oh, we yeah. did not see, like we didn't see mm-hmm. Donkey Kong stuff. We know that's in the movie that we didn't see, but when there were all those like um uh. Like bone Koopas, yeah, chasing dry Luigi, bones, dry yeah, bones, like yeah. chasing like Luigi. That looked very fun. I'm excited to see what that mm-hmm. is all about. And like, just hearing a little bit of Charlie Day's voice, uh-huh. uh, like running away from 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 those. Yeah, I don't know. It's a. Uh, I I, lo- I love that everything we've seen. Uh, we still basically have no idea what the totally. the movie will be about or what it's going to feel like moment to moment. But we saw more than I thought we were going to. Yeah, totally. And uh, I think it visually looks really good. Yeah, it does. Like I feel like it. Uh, one of the things I don't really like about Illumination Entertainment movies generally is that I feel like they look pretty cheap. Yeah. And this one, I, I 
do not feel that way. Like, I feel like it looks really good. Um, yeah, I, I, it's also I, just kind of nice to see like a bright, colorful movie, like these sort of color palette for especially like big blockbuster movies lately has been so like, you know, kind of like dour and like oversaturated and stuff. Um, and just to, to see these like bright colors, uh, and like just a lot of busyness, uh, in, in the mushroom kingdom, like it just feels very like Baroque and cool. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I, I'll, I'll be excited to see more. Uh, and then someday you and I are going to go, uh, see this movie and talk about it on a podcast. Yeah, I'm not dreading it anymore. I'm not dreading it You know, it I'm, I'm happy to be able to put this to bed and just be like, okay, like, uh, I have a little faith that this could turn out to be fun. Yeah. Um, there, uh, I like what's happening with the music. Um, there's like, uh, the Koji Kondo themes are being incorporated into like the orchestral score, um, which we get like a little bit of in the trailer itself when, when Mario appears, um, which is like, I don't know, it, it's well incorporated and sounds good and not cheap. They call out the composer. Yeah. I whose name I can't remember, remember who it is, now. but it's somebody I recognize their name. I'm embarrassed that I can't recall oh. it. We also got the name of the movie, which we uh, talked about last week, not knowing this is uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Yeah. So the Brothers is part of the title. We didn't know that for sure. So I guess Super Mario Bros. Uh, movie. And April 7th, 2023. Mm-hmm. So not that long of a wait at this point. About half a year. Jack Black was also at uh, New York Comic Con for the live like for you know the reveal that was happening in the room Miyamoto at the beginning like specifically calls out like shout out uh, shout out to New York Comic Con basically and uh Jack Black th- at New York Comic Con remember we're not supposed to let him down <laughs> right that's right had this to say um uh about Bowser he said quote well you know I did bring some of my heavy metal roots because in a way Bowser is kind of like a heavy metal rock star you know a big strong and scary rock star and i did a little bit of rocking i think you'll be surprised to see that <laughs> bowser has a musical side i'm thinking about the move uh, after the movie comes out i'm taking it to broadway there might be a one-man show do you think that there is like is, is this a musical or do you think he's Ooh. just being i think he's just being jack black mm-hmm. um i'm sure uh, at some point he's like you know singing a line just because like that's how he would deliver it uh uh and yeah, I think he's just like riffing and having a fun time. That's my guess. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Um, but also, if this was a musical, like, yeah, I'd I'd, I'd be there for that. Um, Brian Tyler is is the composer. Oh, okay. Um, Iron Man three, uh, Age of Ultron with Danny Elfman, uh, Crazy Rich Asians. Now you see me. I don't know which of these uh, scores would have been one that um, like leapt out to you. Mark. I think just I know him as like a composer like from like iron man and yeah. uh, his work on age of ultron and stuff like that uh the next Splatfest has been announced and it's tied to pokemon scarlet and pokemon violet which crazily enough is not that far away at this point it's nuts it's so soon so the next Splatfest starts november 11th at 4 p.m pacific time and runs through the same time on november 13th uh the theme this time is which first partner pokemon would you choose a grass type, a fire type, or water type? Sure. Uh, first partner Pokemon. So the starter. Yeah. Okay. This is so. Is Nintendo's new language for this not starter? <laughs> I don't know. Has it always been first partner <laughs> yeah, Pokemon? Maybe it has. And starters. This is a cartridge yeah, versus a ga- game pack scenario <laughs> all over again. again. Yeah. Um. Hey, that's fun. I, I like uh, participating in, in a splat fest, and also I feel like this is a good one for like truly dividing um, people into like three sort of even categories. I don't know that there's going to be one that's more popular than the others. Yeah, I don't know either. Maybe uh, fire. Yeah, because like, uh, what was the last one? Like, uh, grub, gear, and fun. Yeah, or was that what it was? Like, yeah. that one felt kind of arbitrary. But well, the, and gear ran away with it, if you recall. Right, but I mean, like, which one you're going to choose? Sure. Um, versus like this, I feel like there are real allegiances here, you know, yeah, built yeah, yeah. in over decades of right, playing right. Pokemon games for some people. Uh, do you have a gut like that 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 you go with by type? I usually am not looking at the type. I'm usually looking at like which looks like the cutest <laughs> Me animal. Too. Yep. <laughs> yep. So no, I I don't really have. Uh, I'm drawn to grass types. Yeah. Um. So maybe I'll go with grass type. Oh, it's hard to say no to a Rowlet. Yeah, right? but I feel like fire type 
could be a popular choice. Yeah, I feel that way too. So we'll I, see. I think we we may need to go through like a process of determining which of each of the starters we like in each generation. I think that's totally what we should do. And then seeing like wh- how it's weighted uh, for for the types. Yeah, that's a great idea. So we'll figure that out before this Blatfest. Uh-huh. And everyone listening to this needs to do the same. <laughs> okay? So we'll demonstrate how to do it on the next news episode. That's right. By listening to this, you have signed a verbal contract. That's right. Even though we're the only ones being verbal when you listen to this podcast. Maybe you're talking. We can't tell. Um, but you've signed that contract. Uh-huh. And that's the team that you're going to pick. We now have release dates for Persona 3 Portable, Persona 4, and Persona 4 Golden on Switch. Uh, in addition to other platforms. So when they were announced for coming to Switch in the June Nintendo Direct Mini, only the release date for Persona 5 Royal uh of october 21st geez that's, that's also another really, one that's right on top of us um was revealed but now we know the persona 3 portable and uh persona 4 golden are coming to basically all platforms on january 19th 2023 so i was not expecting this i was not expecting them to come a so quick um because january is but three months after um october um, and I wasn't expecting them to land at the same time. Yeah, me either. Uh, that we're going from like no mainland yeah. p- Persona games on Switch to, to all of the relevant ones. Uh huh. Um, are do Persona and Persona Two exist? Do we know? Does anyone know? <laughs> they must have at some point. I think point. the series starts at three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just uh emerged fully form. Um, are you, where, where is, cause we've talked about, uh, Persona, the Persona games coming to Switch. I believe at some point I said, uh, they were never going to come to Switch. Uh, oops, I'm wrong. Um, do you have any interest in investigating these games when they do come out? On I Switch? do. And I kind of, uh, I need guidance on which one I should direct my efforts to, because there is zero chance I'm going to play all three. Right. It, it, especially like in the immediate. And so I kind of need to know like which one should... I play it. It's, I know. I know they all have their like defenders. Yeah. Um. But it kind of seems like it's between Persona Four Golden and Persona Five Royal. Yes. And, but, I, I think that's. I think that's. I. I. I don't know that there would be anyone advocating for three over either of those other two. Maybe they would say it would be like their second place or whatever. But like, yeah, it's gonna. It's gonna be four or five. And know that it's. And it's like my introduction to playing really right. like a mainline Persona game. But I. I am interested. I just feel like I need a little help in knowing like where I should direct my attention. Now, what is the? Is there like a a part of Persona that you are either like in the abstract attracted to, or that you don't want to have to engage with? Like what? Like how? How do you yeah. think someone could guide you towards either four or five? Yeah, I don't know. I um, I. D- I don't really know because I feel like with both Royal and Golden, a lot of like the rough edges of uh, the initial releases are right. smoothed out. So they both seem like potential entry points. I know, and maybe four is like worse at this uh, just because it's a little bit older, but I know that there is some like weird handling of, yeah, you know, there's some like, like homophobic LGBT stuff. stuff. Yeah going on and so maybe that is that is something that i'm not like particularly keen on experiencing and so maybe that guides to like one of those three over the others yeah so if someone can advise us as to which of these persona games is the gayest uh that's the one we'll <laughs> yeah play. that's that's the one we'd prefer to play for sure <laughs> if, if persona 6 is like all gay like give it give us that one yeah i think that's where we're that's where our interests lie we also have a release date for the Splatoon 3 Amiibo that were announced a while back without, like, any release inf- date information tied to them. And notably, uh, well, we all, all we did know is that they would, they would be coming out after Splatoon 3 launched, which, uh, interesting. <laughs> so, the, it's uh, Inkling, uh, which is yellow, Octoline, which is blue, and Small Fry are going to arrive on November 11th. So we have a date, basically a month from now. But as far as I can tell, uh, we don't have any pricing information. Right. And they're not up for pre-orders. But it seems like they're all going to be sold individually, like not in a three-pack. At least in North America. It's it's not it's not totally clear yet. Um, uh, I just, you got to love the way Nintendo announces and reveals stuff where it's like, I just want information about the product that I'm going to buy from you. Um what do you think they're going to charge for these things? Because like the sort of base price for Amiibo, they started at like thirteen ninety nine or twelve ninety nine, something like that, and then just sort of the basic ones have like gone up a little bit in price. Um, 
I was just looking at the uh, the Loftwing amiibo um, that uh, you know I got with uh, Skyward Sword, and that that dude was twenty five dollars. Oh wow! Um, but it's also a bigger amiibo, right. right? Like the the bird is a beefy bird. And the Metroid Dread ones, I can't remember what the um, I can't. Well, it was what a two the pack. price was, and it was the two pack. I honestly have no idea. I have not really purchased. I don't think I've purchased any amiibo for myself, and so I don't really have any sense of what they cost. Yeah. I'm gonna say seventeen bucks. Seventeen that that feels safe. Sixteen ninety nine. Yeah, that that feels pretty safe. Um, Mark, I have all of these Splatoon amiibos, um, so I feel like I have to. I I'm on this train. Like, it's the only amiibo collection that I have complete. Oh, uh, uh huh. Outside of Metroid, I guess I do have all the Metroid amiibos, but not. I don't have like a a a, a, a what's his name Ripley Rid, Ridley. I don't I don't have a Ridley. Um, but like all of the Metroid series ones, I have all of those. They got you. They got me. They got me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick these things up, whatever they cost. They're gonna be twenty bucks each. I'm gonna drop <laughs> the price of the game again on these amiibo. The voice of Bayonetta was recast for Bayonetta three. According to a Game Informer interview with director Yusuke Miyata, quote, various overlapping circumstances, end quote, prevented original voice actor Helena Taylor from continuing the role. Helena, probably. Helena? How would you say that? Uh, either one of those two ways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jennifer Hale is the new voice of the character in English. In Japanese, the character continues to be voiced by Atsuko Tanaka. Uh, and Jennifer Hale is a uh, uh, a, a storied um, video game voice actor. That's the original Cortana, yeah? I am not sure. Uh, I'm looking up Jennifer Hale. She's in a bunch of stuff. Killer Queen Black, an indie game from 2019, is shutting down in November. Liquid Bit, the developer, posted a message explaining that Amazon GameSparks, the service that powers Killer Queen Black Black's backend services, is being shut down by Amazon uh, on November 3rd. 30th or September 30th, one of those two. Liquid Bit investigated other solutions, but unfortunately found that they'd basically have to rewrite the entire game, which is not like something that they're able to take on right now. Uh, it is November 30th. I saw that there were uh, there was uh, a couple sources reporting September, um, but it is November. That makes sense. Yeah. That they're shutting it down in November. Right. Um, so uh, c- come the end of November, um, there'll be no way to play Killer Queen Black. Mark, I picked up Killer Queen Black. I know. I remember. When it was to, released. Up... I never played it. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> so it's just been sitting on my Switch. Um, Killer Queen is, of course, uh, in its original incarnation, is a five versus five arcade experience where um, all uh, all 10 players are on a single screen that's like a competitive head to head, you know, team of five versus team of five. Um, and you're trying to, your play is like little ants or little bugs, uh, one of which is the queen. There are two warriors and two workers, um, and there are various win conditions. Uh, one is kill your opponent's queen. Another is like ride the snail from one side to the other, and I forget what the third win condition is. Um, but in like arcade settings, it has this very like, uh, you know, reputation for being just like a fun, cool, accessible, but very like competitive thing if like people are, are, are really into it. Killer Queen Black was sort of the attempt to make that make a home version of that that people could actually play uh, in their homes, and uh, they in, they knocked down the the five player team to a four player team, and I just don't know if it ever really found an audience. Um, I think if it had found like a big audience, then you know whatever uh, how if if someone was going to shut them down, they would have found a solution to uh, like you say rewrite the whole game or whatever. Um, but it seems like uh, it, didn't, it didn't find that audience. Uh, and I feel partially responsible for that, having not played the version that I bought. But also, I supported it, right? Even, right. even in not playing it, yeah. I paid for it. That's true. Um, should we get together at some point and play uh, Killer Queen Black before it shut down forever? I feel like we should. This is weird, right? Because like, we, we talk about games that disappear uh, when like you know e- various e-shops close down. Uh, and then this is, and then there's this. And yeah, it, it is weird. Completely lost. It'll be completely lost. Completely time lost. Now. Yeah. Finally, we're about five weeks away from Pokemon so- Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. And last week, a new 14 minute trailer for the game was released with some new details. So, uh, they are introducing Paldean Picnics, 
which are similar to camping that sure. we saw in Sword sure. and Shield, but uh, instead of being like a locked first person view, it's in third person, and there's multiple ways to interact with your Pokemon. So are you like walking around the the campsite, like yeah. you're controlling? Uh-huh. Your, okay. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, the picnic area. Uh huh. And then uh, also in Sword and Shield, you could like create and craft different curries, like mm-hmm. they introduced like cooking. Um, and you cook different curries that gave you different like abilities and buffs and things like that. But in this game, in Scarlet and Violet, you are crafting sandwiches oh, instead of curry. Easier to travel with. <laughs> easier, much easier to travel with. Um, Mark, I had uh, a, a little like uh, stroke of inspiration um, last week. Uh, I, I I came up with uh, this is speaking of picnics. Um, speaking of. Uh, uh, I, I, I came up with a band name, okay? And it, it, the, the band you have to conceptualize as like five or six dads. Uh, <laughs> and dad in this case is just like, it's a vibe, right? Like okay, it's not necessarily, yeah, uh-huh. you know, age, age uh, gender, and uh, child havingness uh, be darned. Uh-huh. Um, like five or six dads, and they all play like oldies, uh, and they play it, you know, like out at out the park uh, during the summer when they have enough time to like get together and, uh, re- you know, rehearse these things. Uh, and so based on uh, Panic at the the disco their picnic at the band shell <laughs> very nice thank you very good i uh, also included in the trailer were more details on character customization options and it looks like there's a lot more of them plus it looks like uh they're no longer locked to specific genders so similar to what we've seen in like other nintendo games and just other games in general splatoon most recently yeah there's not like uh haircuts for one gender and haircuts for another it's like uh they can be the customizations can be used on any character right i mean ultimately just realizing that like yeah there's nothing about these characters that like <laughs> demand no, demands gender <laughs> yeah. or or, uh, or sex like uh-uh. yeah just whatever hair you want pokemon now drop items when defeated that can be used in crafting tm mm-hmm. and a little more details on terrestrializing so there are 18 terra types in total Terra Pokemon have a type, and I'm saying so, some so of these yeah, words, but, but I don't I, know I don't, what they mean. Terra types? Yeah, let's not interrogate this okay, too great. much. Let's not Terra- interrogate this too much. <laughs> Terra Pokemon have a type that uh-huh. might not have anything to do with their basic types. So I, yeah. So Terra type, but, it, but it's like you can be, I'm speculating, I'm yeah. pitballing. It's pitballing? It's pitballing. You're pitballing. You can. You're pitballing. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Somebody put this to music. Yeah. You can have um, a Terra type. I wish I knew any of Pitbull's music. <laughs> <laughs> that I could sing something. But I, just, I was about I, to I, was I about know to he's a musician, but I, I have know, no idea. I, know. I was about to sing something, but he was like, no, that's a Black Eyed Peas song. <laughs> nope, that's a Black Eyed Peas song. Oh, shoot. These are all Black Eyed Peas songs. <laughs> okay. I th- uh, so your Terra type, you could be like Terra type ground. But you're like a normal Pokemon regularly. Sure. But okay, so 18 Terra types in total. Uh huh. Does that, how many types are there in total? Oh, Patrick, I've, I, 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 I have no, no I idea. Know. But this, so, but this is what I'm saying is that like, I, I don't think Terra type can just be like another, like the hidden type that they have, because why would they say 18 Terra types in total? I, okay, so I think what you're <laughs> saying, and I think I agree with it, yes. is that there are more than 18 types in total, and there are just 18 Terra types. How many types? Well, while you're looking that up, yes. I'll say one more thing about terrestrializing, or terrestrializing. Uh, terra types can be found in the wild. So like Pokemon that our specific Terra types can be found in the wild. So you might see like a Pikachu wearing like a crystal hat that is blue because it's mm. a water type Terra type. Okay, Mark, I'm about to upset both of us. There are 18 types. Oh, no, no way. <laughs> so that means there are equal number Yeah. So Terra uh, types and regular types. So it, are the Terra types just like Terra normal, Terra fire, Terra water, Terra grass? I guess so. Man, people who 
know anything about Pokemon must be like tearing their hair. They love this show. They love it. (laughs) They tune into this show so they can hear the latest Pokemon news and we deliver everything that they want exactly to the T. There could be no improvement on what we tell them about the franchise they already know so much about. Well, everybody, hold on to your butts because I'm about to try to describe a new Pokemon to you. (laughs) That's uh, Farid Giraffe, which it appears from my understanding, to be a, a Paldian form of a Girafarig, which is um like kind of like a reverse giraffe okay. that has uh, its tail has a head. In, instead of its neck having a head no, or so it's, both? Its neck has a head uh-huh. and its tail has a head as well. Okay. And like the, the front half of it is y- yellow. And the back half of it is brown. Okay, so it's like, what if Cat Dog was a giraffe? Kind, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Although the tail head is like small. Okay. Like it's a little bull. But yeah, basically, what if Cat Dog was a giraffe? So, so I think it's a pal, I think it's like a Paldian form of a Jira Rig because the description on the Pokemon website says, quote, Jira Rig living in the Paldia region will evolve into this Pokemon. Oh, okay. So it, it actually is like an evolution of the Girafarig. Okay. That only exists in this game in, in the Paldea region. So it's not the what do they normally call it when it's like, it's like a, a variant um like uh it may just be like form uh like uh the, like the Alolan uh uh Right. I want to e- say f- executor. I want to say form? Uh, maybe form. But so you're saying We that know everything there is to know about Pokémon. So Pokemon a Girafarig <laughs> Yes. Comes into the Paldia region, and it is just a Jira rig, but it can evolve into this new Faragaraf that is uh, specific to the Paldian region. I don't know if you can take a, a Jira Garaf from somewhere else, bring it to the Paldia region, and it suddenly has new evolutionary uh, capabilities. I think it has to be native to Paldia. I, oh, I see. I see. Okay. But then again, I don't know. <laughs> I uh, this next like description yes it broke my mind yes. and it's like it made me I had to go look up what a gear for rig was uh to even try to understand it but okay just ponder the sentence with me yeah the head of its main body and the head of its tail combined the head of its wait what what happens when they combine that's the whole sentence okay, the head... there's an exclamation mark at the end of it the head of its main body and the head on its tail combined. That's a selling point for this new Pokemon. That they combined? It felt... It's a lot. This this Pokemon is is a lot. lot. Okay, so it's like a a giraffe that's a cat dog. Uh Uh-huh. But the... The head of its main body and the head on its tail combined! Huh. (laughs) You know what it makes me think of? It makes me think of the alien and how, like, it opens its mouth and there's, like, a little head inside. Yeah. I don't think that's how it works, though, but that'd be fun. So it's like a xenomorph <laughs> giraffe cat dog. All right, Mark, let's get out of the news. And what music cue is this going to be? It was the correct one. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Remember, please rate, review, and follow us on Apple Podcasts. If you like the episode, you should share it on Facebook or Twitter, wherever you share stuff. We appreciate it when you do that. It helps us out a lot. You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell, and the show is at Nincart Society. Also, you should go and check out uh, Mark Mitchell on uh, the uh, podcast that you did with the oh uh, yeah video NPC games guys. Uh, comedy show mm-hmm. and I I was on for an Xbox 360 draft so if you want to hear me talking about something that is not Nintendo related the perfect podcast uh, go check that out also we have a Facebook page which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society Anthony DeLuca made our logo our theme music is provided by Apipetti you can get more of his music by going to apipetti.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying thank you for listening.